Greetings, dear chess fans and experts. This is Feedmaster Max Omeriv with you, and today we'll analyze the legendary game from 1999 between Gary Kasparov and Veselin Topalov, which was played in Vegonze. It's so legendary that it became a symbol of the tournament, and some people named it the best game of the millennium. So in short, it took all sorts of titles. And it's all thanks to Gary Kasparov's ingenious combination, which is considered to be the longest combination ever calculated during a game. Well, let's see how it was. e4, d6. Topalov already surprises us with his first moves. He usually goes for the Sicilian or e5, but in this case, he played d6. And as for Kasparov, it was a surprise too. He had never encountered such moves in classical chess games before, so he was a little confused. d4, knight f6. Knight c3, g6, bishop e3. White chooses a simple plan. Queen d2, f3, long castling. g4, h4. Kasparov later commented that it had seemed to him that it hadn't been that sophisticated at all. You arrange the pieces this way, then you move your pawns, and you don't need to learn anything. But then he disproved his own words and said that specifics did matter and that it was necessary to know the specific order of moves. That's why, friends, at the highest level of chess, you need to be cramming the variations, and you can't do without it. But until you reach the level of candidate master at least, you can use the easier way. Just know what and where to move without the exact order. Bishop g7, queen d2, c6. By the way, on knight g4 here, we just play bishop g5. This is just in case you don't know how to respond in such a situation. Just move the bishop away and it's no big deal. So we won't pay attention to this yet. Queen d2, c6. Now we play f3. What's the point of this move? First, we protect the e4 pawn. Second, we don't let knight on g4, and we don't let bishop either. And third, we prepare pawn attack. g4, h4, h5. This is a many move maneuver. b5, g knight to e2. This move is a bit ill timed, and Kasparov said it wasn't very good. Yeah, it was better to castle queenside. Alright, knight e2, knight d7, bishop h6. The meaning of the move is that we trade off this bishop, which participates in the defense of black's king side. And by the way, this is quite a typical move, when you trade off the fianchettoed bishop. Bishop h6, queen h6, bishop b7. Black forfeits the castling privilege, but he's not too embarrassed by it. By the way, they could castle here, but it's not a guarantee that the king would have a better position here, because you can get a very strong attack. h4, g4, h5. This bishop gets captured. Anyway, the king would probably not have a better position here. That's why Topalov willingly leaves it in the center. A3, a strong move. Kasparov stops pawn storm from Topalov, so he does not allow him to play b4, e5, long castling, queen e7, king b1. So firstly, it's a preventative. Fairly typical move when we castle queen's side, and secondly, we free c1 for the e2 knight, to bring him into the game somehow, and then bring the bishop out. a6, knight c1, long castling. Black also castled queen's side, and actually their king is pretty safe there. Knight b3, ed, rook takes d4. c5. Topalov starts to play boldly. Rook d1, knight b6. Black hopes to advance d5 soon. Actually, black's position here is quite good. They have an advantage in the center, and the position is not worse in development. The structure is a bit iffy, but that's only temporary. g3. King b8, knight a5. This is a double move because objectively speaking, it's just an empty shot. Black plays bishop a8. Topalov keeps the bishop, and it's not clear what the knight is doing here. Kasparov just puts the knight on the edge of the board. Not a very good move. As you can see, even the strongest chess player in the world can make stupid moves and still win. Bishop h3. Kasparov develops the bishop, doesn't let rook to c8. And here in general, Kasparov didn't like his position. He had a crisis of ideas. He didn't really understand what to do. d5. Black implemented their plan. Queen f4 check. King a7. Rook e1. 
d4. Well, the exchange on e4 would be a weaker decision, because here we just take and then want to play knight d5. And then put on knight e4, we take. Play like that. So we get about this kind of tricky continuation. Knight c6 and black is in big trouble. Queen a7, mate, is on. Queen hits b6. Well, all in all, it's bad. That's why it's not worth for black to take e4. He plays d4. And this is where the whole thing begins. This is the key moment of the game, because here, Kasparov calculated his combination. He plays knight d5. So far this move doesn't look combinational, but soon you'll see. Knight takes d5. Ed. Queen d6. It seems that white just lost this pawn. It's unclear why he moved that knight. It looks like white has simply a hopeless position. The knight is weak, the pieces are bad, the d5 pawn is weak. But here begins this show. Rook takes d4. Here Topolov had many options to equalize. But as he himself later wrote, he was very curious to see how it all would have ended when he had taken the rook. So he couldn't help himself and took it. The rook's captured, and then the mayhem began. Rook e7 check. That is a very strong move. The point is that the rook cannot be taken. Say on queen e7, queen takes d4, check will follow immediately, and king will have problems with retreats. There is only b8 square, but after queen b6, we have to play bishop b7, and here we can play knight c6 with royal fork. But it's not even about the fork, it's about queen a7 mate. For those who haven't noticed, c8 is controlled by the bishop, so king can't move here either. Therefore, the rook cannot be taken. You have to play king b6, because on king b8, queen hits d4, and queen a7 mate threatens. It turns out to be something like this. White wins. That's why the king moves to b6. With attack on the knight, by the way. Queen d4 check. He gives away this knight in addition to the rook. King takes a5, b4 check. King a4, queen c3. That's a modest move. And what about the material? White's down a rook and a knight. For two pawns? It's not a great compensation, though. Now queen b3 mate threatens. So black plays queen takes d5. It would be bad, by the way, to play bishop takes d5 because of king b2. On any move by black, say on rook e8, we just want to play queen b3 and deliver a beautiful mate with this pawn. Just look at how beautiful it is. It's a work of art, isn't it? That's why bishop d5 was not played. Queen d5, rook a7. Coming in from the rear. Bishop b7, rook hits b7. We take advantage of the fact that queen cannot split for two flanks. Say if this rook takes, then there's queen b3. Queen c4. Queen captures f6. Now we just exchange down. We've already regained some material. King takes a3. Black goes on the attack with their king. Queen a6. King b4. c3 check. King takes c3. Queen a1 check. King d2. Queen b2 check. King d1. Look at this little diagram of what way the black king is gone. From the e8 square, then to d8, then castled on c8. Then b8, a7, b6, a5, a4, a3, b4, c3, d2, d1. 
a huge way for the king to go, considering that white still has a full board of pieces. Queen, rook, and bishop, and the black king invaded white's camp like this. This happens very rarely. Which is why the game made such an impression on the public. By the way, that's the position Kasparov already had in mind when he moved knight to d5. He saw the rough outline of the position. Can you imagine that? Knight d5 is the 22nd move. And so Kasparov calculated, well, at least 13 moves ahead? And then followed. Bishop f1. He also gives up this bishop. Rook d2. But the thing is that taking the bishop is bad because of simple queen c2 and rook e7. And then there's mate. Rook d2, rook d7. He gave up that rook as well. Rook hits d7, bishop hits c4, bc, queen h8. And then Kasparov has a clear advantage. Let's see how it went. None of this is very interesting. The pawn does work. Topalov, of course, tried to figure out something, but it didn't work either. And in this position, Veselin admitted his defeat. So what were the key mistakes for black in general here? Well, the last decisive mistake here was moving king to a3, when he boldly took the a3 pawn with his king. It was wrong, of course. He should have played rook d1 check. And there in the variations, somehow black would still hold on. White would have the advantage, but black would hold on. And before that, of course, cd was not very accurate. He shouldn't have been so tempted to take the rook. But if he hadn't taken the rook, we wouldn't have seen that beauty. So well done, Topolov. Let me go through that position again. When king moved to d1, so you can enjoy it and understand how beautiful the game of chess is. So friends, solve chess problems. Analyze the games of great chess masters and improve your skills. And then you might someday be able to create a masterpiece like this. And I thank you for your attention. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to keep up to date with all our latest videos. Also, check out our Telegram channel and Instagram where we post only the latest news in the world of chess. Keep playing and studying chess, and I'll see you soon.